Dennis Katsanos, former head of Sky Sport, joins us. Dan, how do you take a penalty, mate? You pick your spot and you bury it and you go low. So when that's, you say uh, bury it, what do you mean? Explain be, explain the concept of burying it. What does that mean? Okay. I mean, you, you give it everything. Um, yeah, you don't change your mind halfway through. You don't do any bullshitty, fancy, I'm going to do a semi-step or whatever, show-offy thing. Um, you just get into it, you put it away, you walk back to halfway, and your team wins. That's all you need to do. So yesterday we watched Japan take the funniest bunch of penalties, and I didn't think I could see... A- <laughs> I didn't think I could see anything softer, more marshmallow than that until I saw the Spaniards. Luis Enrique has said that they practiced over a thousand penalties. That's just rubbish. I mean, you know, they they looked lethargic, they looked disinterested. When you take two steps back, mate, and you know, and you don't even have the power in your legs because you're not running, and you hit it side footed, it's just going to just dribble towards the keeper. I don't understand it. Look, I, I admire some of the guys that have got the big kahunas to do it, but if you don't pull it off, um, it costs you nation. And that's, it's, it's so evident. Can I just say one thing about the Spanish? I love their waist strip. Uh, they might have been lethargic. They might be terrible at penalties, but I looked at that strip and went, oh, I might go get that. So I'm not just hearing us say, so you're watching a team collapse in front of the cameras and go out of the World <laughs> Cup, and all you're thinking is a fashion statement. And you're a bubble and squeak, mate. You wear blue. You can't. You can't like another blue. <laughs> I knew you would. I knew you would give me a hard time about it. I thought, do I say it? Don't I say it? <laughs> I, did, I must. Oh, honestly, I said to me, oh, that strip's quite cool. So yeah, yeah, it caught my. But no, they were they were they were absolutely shocking. I I couldn't believe it. I just. It, it, I must admit, Marty, and I wish I'd actually videoed it and signed it. I um I said to my kids yesterday, Morocco are going to win two one in, in regular time. I got that completely wrong. I got the outcome right. You did, but I got uh, I, yeah. I picked Spain to score first and Morocco to score two two after. So anyway, but now they're still going. And look, um, Bono, their keeper, um, to t- to be fair, some fantastic saves from him. Um, you know, look, you can see what I'm going to do here. You know, he moves in mysterious ways. He's even better than the real thing. Go on. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking <laughs> more of Mr. Uh, and Mrs. Katsano sitting there in Island Bay, hearing their son say that he would rather wear a Spanish away shirt than a Greek shirt. Uh, I mean, oh, that... no, no. Come on, man. Never. No, 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 no. Look, it's just, you know, it's, it's when, you, when your Greek one's in the wash and your away shirt's in the wash <laughs> and you haven't got through you haven't got round to it as well, and then your Auckland City one's there, and your Olympic one's not quite there. And um, you know, it was funny with that final the other yeah, day. So yeah. I was thinking, I was thinking of cutting my two, my Olympic and my um, Auckland City shirt in half and stitching it together. <laughs> it was like, and then I thought, oh no, I'm just going to get hammered whichever way I go. So you know, we had we done we had done Big Ive on the program yesterday uh, talking about oh, that. Just uh, it's out outstanding, mate. What an achievement! And I just love the fact that that bar of success continually gets raised with that club, and they continually walk towards it, and they continually want more and more and more. Let's turn our attention back to what we saw today, Morocco. Yep. Yep. And uh, and Spain couldn't score, couldn't separate after 120 minutes. But then the thing I love about the penalties, and I always used to, I always used to argue against this. And but then you know I decided, look, you've got to have a way to to find a winner. You can't go and have a replay after that because you know then that handicaps whoever wins for the next round of games. And it is still a hell of a skill to be able to hit a penalty, as much psychological as it is physical. But you know it just these are professional players. You would have, th- I mean, I would think Dennis that. This is part of your pre-match planning. You know, you you must be aware that this is the way to end the game. If, if that, because we always used to talk, talk about the Germans. Why do they win penalty shootouts? For God's sake, there's a reason, isn't it? Yep, absolutely. And it's funny because Casey Frank and I were talking about this, and you know, completely different sport in basketball. But I was talking to him about that buzzer beater clutch shot, and he said to me, "We just practice it over and over and over and over." Um, that I'm about to say the same thing. You know, so you think of transferring that to football. It is exactly the same. You would sit there and you would practice your penalties and you think about what you're doing. Um, you'd know that they would have scouted you. Mm-hmm. So you'd be alternating your, your penalty pattern. So if you traditionally go left and you know that they scouted you, your last three or four have been left, you'd mix it up a bit. So what I said before, maybe you might go high or you might go straight down the middle with a bullet. But um, yeah, the, the, you just you know all these things. Um, you've scouted the other teams. You've got so many people involved in terms of your coaching and your scouting and everything you're doing. So... Absolutely. You would rehearse it. You would practice it. So when that clutch moment comes up, um, 
the goal doesn't get smaller and the keeper doesn't get bigger, it's like, oh, yeah, I've done this a thousand times yeah, in training. Yeah, yeah. I just need to put the ball down and put it away. Oh, and I know that people Simple say, thing. hey, you can't replicate the atmosphere and the conditions and the circumstance. No, you can't. But what you can is Correct. practice the actual physicality of it, which means that you put your foot through the ball and you aim. To me, it's like a squash shot or a tennis shot. You look at your angle, you look at your trajectory, you look at what it takes to hit in that place. And that's where the practice comes in. You know, you, to hit it in the top corner is not something that is easy to do. You have to practice that. You know, it's like Mbappe's shot, you know, sitting there at the edge of the penalty area to smack it in from there. Because, you know, the thing that confuses me, mate, is all of these players, if that was live during a game and the ball landed on the penalty spot and they had a clear goal, none of them would side foot it in. They would all smack it in, right? Yeah, they'd bury it. Absolutely bury it. So why don't they do it Absolutely off the penalty spot? Great. I mean, that's just what I don't I've, get. I, I think part of it's maybe a little bit of safety because they're scared maybe the laces, they're leaning back, they might shoot it over. Um, that They think they can generate just as much power with a with a side foot. I, I, you know, it gives you a little bit of curvature. There's, there's a, a number of reasons, but I, but for, for me, for me, any, any kids that I've talked to or coached or have had the opportunity to take penalties, it's, um, yeah, my, you know, it's, I just keep it simple, just... Pick a spot and bury it. And put your foot through saves it. it. Saves mm. it. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Put your foot through it, 100%. Yeah. Are you disappointed with Spain? They lost to Japan in that uh, final group match, um, but we always kind of thought that was a game that, you know, they, they, they knew they would qualify anyway. It's a very young side. I mean, you see a lot of potential in this side, but I think that they've ended on a, a, just a real wet squib. Yeah, I don't think um, there's going to be a warm homecoming <laughs> when, they, when they get home. And I know they had that, uh, what was it, that 40-year curse of uh, never winning anything and and absolutely dying in penalties. And I think they've started another another penalty stretch where, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't win a penalty shootout for another long time. So apologise to uh, El Barrier and all the Spanish boys at Auckland City. But, um, yeah, yeah, no, they've got to they've got to get better at that. It, it is disappointing. I, I do like the potential in the young guys, and I think they, they'll bounce back. And, and like always, they'll be a, a world superpower. But I think it'll take them a while to... Um, to get over this. Dennis Katsanis, former head of Sky Sport Football, is with us. And then you look at the other game. Now, I picked the Swiss because I just thought that after watching them play Serbia, great fighting qualities. I thought they were well-organised, well-drilled. I mean, I don't, no one picked 6-1, did they? Oh, nowhere near it. Like, especially when um, Ronaldo was, was benched. I, I don't know a lot about Ramos. I do now. <laughs> I, do, I do now. Mr. hat trick, and I thought, Wow. You know, um, yeah, it's just what an incredible, incredible dream uh, of a World Cup to come on um, for Ronaldo, score, score three shots. But no, uh, score three goals, pardon me. But I would have picked something a lot cagier and something a lot closer. And, and let's not forget when the Swiss hosted um, Euros uh, in the early 2000s, uh, they, was it 10 billion Swiss francs or whatever it was that they invested in their football program for this current generation that are going through um, and, um, you know, they spend a lot of money, and today th- there's no value in it <laughs> at all. Uh, it's absolutely pumped. Yeah, when you're down two or three, I, I suppose you just got you got to go for it because it's a one-off match, and in the end, I mean, you could just yeah. see the heads were down. But that first cracking goal from Ramos, you've got to watch it, people, because he gets the ball at a really strange angle in the penalty area, off his left peg, obviously. You know, normally you would, you would, you'd be coaching somebody to say, go across the goal, but they were, you know the angle wasn't there. But to hit that, get that much power generated with that backlift into that top corner, that was just remarkable. He was he was incredible. I was, I was just sitting there because at first I thought, oh, it's Ronaldo's. You know, realistically, it's his last World Cup. It's a big game. What if they, you know, all those things are going through my head. And then when he scored, I went, okay, um, yeah, this coach has seen seen the same as what Manchester United seeing, and it'll be interesting. I don't know if you noticed, I thought the dynamic in the team was a bit better too in terms of the, the way that they interacted, they played, uh, the camaraderie. It, it was. A, uh, did you pick that up? Maybe yeah, I did. Look, look no, no, no. Good. Look, we watched it actually. Like, after the interview came out, if you remember, there were some videos uh, when the team um, was was assembling. There was one where he, he goes up to Bruno Fernandes in the, in the dressing room. Fernandes doesn't want to know him. He goes up to a one of the defenders on the pitch and that defender kind of didn't want to have a bar of them either. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't know whether we can connect these dots, but you know what what we can mm. clearly see is that this is a team that played a hell of a lot better without him, and maybe Ten Hag was exactly right. I mean, he's super, superfluous to requirements at the moment. This is what happens in sport. You get old. People move on, yeah. and, he, and he hasn't. But, Dan, just on his defence, and I was talking to a mate the other day, and I said, you know, listen, 
everyone just needs to take a step back here. This guy lives in a world and a headspace that none of us can understand because we don't know. Everywhere he goes, he's got an entourage of 50. He's put on a pedestal. From the time he was 11 years old, he had smoke being blown up his backside. He is the walking, you know, Portuguese Jesus. Now, when you're treated like that over 20 or 30 years, the way that you look at the world is different from the way that we are trying to see it through his eyes. He's He is Maradona as far as he's concerned, and how dare you drop me from a game? I mean, I have some kind of understanding, or not understanding, but I have some yep. kind of sympathy or empathy for him in that, you know, I, I can't imagine what it's like for him. I mean, what, what are you doing? Is all of a sudden you're telling Djokovic that, no, 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 you aren't welcome at Wimbledon this year. And he's going, what the hell, I'm the guy, you know? Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you. And it's like like anyone, like a, a normal person that's... Um, been in the car accident and lost the use of their legs or, or whatever it might be, whatever trauma that, that you go through, his trauma is um, that age is caught up with him. There isn't that, as you said, that pedestal of demand there. And, and he's going through the mental process of, hang on, what's happening here? And so so some of some of his behaviour and some of the stuff that's come out, um, it's perfectly normal, but you've got to cut him a break. Then, you know, as you said, the, in his time and, and what the guy's done for the sport is just incredible. And, you know, a lot of people would be arguing and, and the draw could work out that way. An Argentina um, Portugal final with Ronaldo versus Messi in the in the middle of the park would just you know on their last World Cup would just be unbelievable, especially if they you know can they by both peak and do something, um, yeah you know out of no, the world. It's a marketer's but, dream, yeah, but it's not a reality yeah. now, you know. So I mean, they, and, nah. and that's I mean these these guys, as you say, I mean when you've played five World Cups, you just think of all the football you've played in between those times. I mean the fact that they're still there yeah. after five. World Cups. Dennis Katsanos is with us. We're talking about the football this morning. So Saturday, we've got Croatia, Brazil, then the Dutch, the Argies. Sunday, it is Morocco, Portugal, England, France. You have got five European teams in the quarters, two from South America and one from Africa. It kind of works out. I mean, maybe you might have got an Asian Confederation team in, or maybe CONCACAF might squeeze one in Mexico. But this is normally how it works, don't you? You'd expect at least four of the quarterfinalists to be European sides. Yeah, no, absolutely, and I'm I'm looking at this thinking, geez, um, can can I just before I before I go there, can I just say I think Brazil are over celebrating. I know they they preempted it by we're going to dance and we're going to do this, but I was just starting to get bored by the by the you know end of the dance and then everyone jumps in and the coach jumps in. I was like boys, do, do your thing, get on with it. Yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah. And also, you haven't won anything yet. I mean, you did this with Neymar no. in 2014, win the World Cup, then do your dance, pal. That's how I look yeah, at it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but but no, you're absolutely right. Proportionally, it should be about 55th. No, it should be uh, a strong proportion of Europe, strong proportion of of South America, and and then yeah, one one or two others, whether it be Africa or Asia. So surprised that there's no Asian side in there. But look, Saturday morning, um, it's it's a tough call. I'm, obviously, I'm married to Croatian. <laughs> I'm entrenched oh, in the community, God so almighty, I've, got, I've, I've got to <laughs> got to go Croatia there, mate. If it goes to penalties, <laughs> uh, Croatia again. But but I the the. The uh, the way the fluidity that Brazil played with it's going to be tough. It, it's it's going to it's, it's going to be a really really tough game. Netherlands Argentina. Um, look, I've as you know both of us know Fred De Jong really well, and I don't know if I can handle him walking around with a oh. orange hat and his orange top, no, and, no. you know, and just going on and on about. I actually want to get him a job at Skinny Mobile. So he can wear orange all the time or something. So you know, then he's got an excuse to wear it. But um, yeah, but I, I I actually could see Argentina going going that one. I, I don't know. Uh, Sunday, oh, I, I'd love to have my Moroccan dream to continue because then I can keep going. I picked them right. I picked them. I picked them. I picked them right at the start. And um, I'm going to go possibly if Mbappe is injured and not going so good because there was you know he hasn't been training in the last few days. Um, I'm going to pick England there. Uh, for wow. That one. So they're, they're my little they're my little picks. Yeah, yeah. I just think um, England is. England a Jew. God, did I say that? <laughs> well, I mean, I just, look, it's not a silly thing to say. Look, that performance against Senegal, and I was very critical of the way that he set it up, like most people on Twitter and social media were. But the thing is, is that what, what you've got to acknowledge with Southgate is when you make a, a final of a, of a European Championship, and two years previous you made the semifinals of a World Cup, and now you're in the quarterfinals, it is understanding how to get through these tournaments. It's not about how you play. It's it's can you get through these rounds? And that guy, you can't you can't argue with the fact that he has figured it out. He's, he's he has, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And look, England were were fantastic last tournament in Russia as well. But, you know, they unfortunately um, got beaten by by Croatia. Went on to the final against France. But but he has. He's he's sussed out the, in terms. You know, we all talk about game management. Um, this tournament management is exactly the same. It's, it's getting through picking the right squad, the right formation, um, and, and hopefully getting your right players to fire at, at, at the time that they need to. But, 
Yeah, look, I, if Mbappe's fit, fit um, I'd, I'd go France, but if, if there is something going on there, and, and he is injured in the ankle injury that, that we're reading about in the paper, um, yeah, it does hamper him. I think England have got enough firepower to get over the top of them. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the way that France dismantled them is obviously going to be on the flanks and at pace and things. Um, also yep. interesting talking to Fred yesterday and the way that uh, he broke it down as well, I thought was exactly right. I mean, he's you know he's very perceptive. You see you see some things. He's we're amazing. seeing we're seeing yep. we're seeing uh, the old fashioned winger beat a guy and put a cross in. Now for years, I mean, Sp- Spain introduced the tick attack. It was all just passing through the middle. But we're actually seeing look, you haven't seen long shots, have you? And that's what Fred said. The whole of the middle of the field is absolutely. When's the when's the last time you saw a thirty yarder from outside the area in this World Cup? I don't think there has been one, has there? Oh, look, I, I actually can't recall one. I can only think of... Uh, the free kicks? Chavez's, Chavez's free kick. That's yeah. The only yeah. one I can think that, that's from a bit of distance. Uh, a Rashford's free, free kick. Kicks. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And um, and the Tiki Taka, look, uh, you know, Spain had 77% of the ball against Morocco. It doesn't necessarily win your games. You know, we always talked about starve the opposition of the ball. You can't score without the ball. Well, you know, there's teams on 17% like um, Japan or teams like Morocco uh, this morning or the other game that they played um, to, to make it through where you've you absolutely starved of the ball, but they can still get it done. So it, it doesn't necessarily equate to the outcome that you want.